Hey, how's it going? This is Kazi from CleverProgrammer.com, and in this video, we're going to be tackling the apples and oranges challenge. So, let's get into it. Now, hopefully, you finished all your string challenges and your dictionary challenges, and you are all caught up to do some amazing new challenges like the type challenges. There's only one challenge in here, so I don't know why they pluralized it. It's their fault. But this challenge is about types, and types in Python lets you check what type is something. So for example, if you picked up an apple, you'd be like, hey, this is a fruit. And if you picked up, uh, I don't know, something else like a carrot, you'll be like, hey, this is a vegetable. Okay. So as a human, we know what types are. But in programming, there are different types as well. And they're important to know because you can then use it to create really cool stuff. All right, so here we're gonna learn to go through types and detect them, okay? So let's go through that. Now, you have types like string, which you can see over here, right? Um, and if you call this type function on a string, anything that's within quotes, Oh, I can just type it in here. So if I say hello, and we want to see what type this is, you already know it's a string, but don't take my word for it. Type in the type function, and it'll tell you exactly what type it is. And look at that. It says it's a string. Now, here what we're doing is we're saying, hey, check if type 1, type 1 should give you back an integer. So for example, 1 is an integer, right? So if you type that in, you'll get back a class integer or type integer. So basically we're asking here, hey, is type of one the same as a type of this thing in quotes? And we find out that's false because type one, um, here we got false. Type one is an integer class and this one is a string class. So a string class is not the same thing as an integer class, just like an apple is not the same thing as a banana or an orange, right? Same idea here. All right, <clears throat> let's see what the heck they want us to do. So they say, make a function that returns apples if given a string, oranges if given an integer, and bananas if given anything else. Okay, very simple. They're saying, hey, if you give me something like a hello or something that a human would say, uh, you know, using a string, anything in quotes, you should return apples if you detect the human saying something. If you see an integer like a number, then say oranges, otherwise say something else. All right, cool, that is not too bad. So basically we'll say that if mm, type of thing, whatever the user typed in is equal equal to type of uh, an integer, right? Um, I wonder if we can say int here. We probably can. Let's try it. Let's try it. Type of one equal to equal int. Boom, we can. Ooh. Okay. So if whatever the user typed in, if the type of that is, uh, is the same type as int, then what we can say is return oranges. oranges like that okay this is gonna be else if and then uh, here what we're gonna say is if the type of thing is a string then I want you to return apples right so I have to write return statement here and then I'll say Otherwise, just return the thing. So this would work fine, but just to be extra clear, I'll write an else statement. I'll say return bananas like that. Okay. So we have, what have we done here? We've distilled English into code, okay? We've turned an idea into reality, right? We uh, executed it. So that's what coding allows you to do. That's the power of it. And that's why it's so important to do these coding challenges because literally 
that's what coding is going to be in your head. Like you have an idea, right, that you came up with. And the idea you came up with is in English. Like I want to make a gaming app that stores uh, each user's account information. It, it stores how much gold they have. It stores uh, what item they use. Uh, it stores um, how many characters they've purchased already. Right. So that's an idea that you have had in English or whatever language. Right. And then coding, you have to take that whatever you said in your own language and break it down into something that the computer can can understand. So then you can scale it to the whole world. OK, so that's what it comes down to. This. That's why I emphasize these challenges so much, because this is literally how you'll improve your skills. And it teaches you the real world skills to go get a job and to even uh, be useful and be a functional and badass developer. OK, so let's continue rolling here and let's see if we're right. Right. I had this whole speech and I swear to God, if I hit play right now and I'm wrong, I'm going to look like an idiot. So let's let's hit play and let's see what happens. OK. All right. Boom. I typed in the number four and I got back oranges. So it looks like it's correct. Uh, if you so basically if you give the function fruit label labeler uh, integer, it should give you back oranges. Well, what happens if I give it a string like uh, hello? It should give me back apples and it does. And what happens if I give it uh, something that's not an integer or a string? Can you come up with an example of something that's not an integer or a string? OK, if you haven't come up with an example, pause. Try to come up with one. If you can't, continue. And an example would be a float number. So a float number meaning like a decimal number, like 4.5. That's not an integer or a string. So let's hit the play button. And indeed, we get bananas. That's exactly how they wanted us to do this challenge, right? Whew. OK, so that's it for this challenge. Hopefully, you learned. Hopefully, you had a blast. And if you're on my website or you click the link below, put it in the comments. If you're on YouTube, put it in the comments. I don't care if you had the wrong solution or the right solution. If you had the wrong solution, you know the drill. Come back the next day or come back a few hours later and try to do it yourself from scratch because without doing, you can't become a better coder. If you're just reading and watching tutorials, you won't become better. You have to practice it and try it yourself. Even though a lot of the times it feels like it's unproductive, you're blank minded and you're just looking at a screen and you're like, this is not productive. But believe it or not, it is productive and it's actually a necessary thing to do to improve. OK, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This concludes the Hour of Python series. I hope that you had a lot of fun. You enjoyed this. Sign up for my new course called Create Apps with Python because that will take all these skills that you culminated within these weeks doing these challenges and it'll put them to use by building apps with the Python skills that you're learning here and that you honed here. OK, so we're going to take your skills and your ideas and turn them into reality, into apps. OK, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.